thought it might be useful to make a short off-the-cuff video about slicing software. This is something that if you haven't done 3D printing before you won't have used, but you will need to get the hang of it if you are 3D printing for this Authenticate project. And there are a few settings in here that don't show up in the kind of default basic options that I thought I'd take you through. I do refer to them in the documentation, but sometimes if you haven't switched on the kind of um, the full advanced settings, you, you might struggle to find them. So I'll print one item and I'll take you through how to use those settings and, and kind of what they do. So here's Cura, which I recommend as, as the slicer to use. It's the, it's the free one and it works with all the printers and it always has some pretty progressive features. I've installed it, it's, I've selected MI Ender 3 from the installation, so it's got defaults for the Ender 3, which is a popular printer, and you know it just works out of the box that way. So I will now open and select one of these STL files that comes with the download, and I'm gonna slice this extension arm short. Now that's how it loads in, but it's not how we want to print it. There are so many reasons that is not how we want to print it. I right click, by the way, and I can rotate around and look, or you can middle click, and just sort of move your perspective on it. But if I right click and rotate, you can see that it's going to be precariously balanced on the bed. What you want to do is pick one of the flat sides to print. Now we could, if I zoom in, we could pick this side to print. But that's not a good side because it's got these indentations. And if they were at the bottom, everything that would be lifted off the bed would sag a little bit. So those indentations would sort of sink towards the bed. Whereas if I scroll around, if I print on that side, that would be a nice smooth base that will sit on the bed. It'll adhere well to the bed and will be just what we want. Now there's a couple of ways that you can make that be on the bottom. One is that over on the left here, there's a rotate and you can drag the green line. Sometimes the axis is confusing, but if you look over here, that tells you that that's the green axis. So you can just drag that green line. Now I don't tend to do that. It's, it's, it works, but occasionally you get something that is slightly off a 90 degree and you, you look, it looks like you've got it flat on the bed, but it, you haven't really. So a particularly useful feature is this, select face to align to the build plate. Click that and then click on that face and it drops. Now that's what I want. Now another thing you might do is if you do not have automatic bed leveling, you may find that the bed levels very well. The nozzle is just touching and just at the right separation from the bed. Say at the corners, of your print bed, but sometimes these the beds are not entirely flat and the, and the middle can be a little bit raised or a little bit low, it might not be your best. And if you're only printing one thing, one trick is to go to a corner where you know that it, it always prints better. So you can do that with the move feature. Just click that and then you can drag in one axis or you can just grab the item and just drag the whole thing. So I think I'll do that. Okay, so we're getting there now. And now I'm going to take you through some settings. If I click up here, so these are the kind of basic settings that you'd get when you just install Cura. But we need to use a few features which aren't visible there. So if I go to the burger thing and I pick all, now we get everything. And what you can do later is if you also click the burger, you can select a custom selection, which, which is pretty useful because even though I go for all, there's quite a lot of settings I never touch. So that you can do later. Right, let's go through them. Layer height 0.12. I design everything at 0.12 and quite a few layers are multiples of 0.12. And if it's a small item, that becomes important. There might only be one or two layers. 0.24 for the first layer. I find it's better to get a little bit more filament down on the first layer, just to make it for a good bed adhesion. Right, let's expand the shell section. 
a, a wall count of four. I'd probably change that. It may be a three default. Four gives you more strength. Top and bottom layers, find five is good. Outer before inner walls, I always pick. It gives you more accuracy on the external dimensions. Printing order, I'm not exactly sure. I tend to just leave it. Print thin walls, I do choose. This is a key area, the horizontal expansion. This is the one where you want to print the calibration device, and see how well it slots into the, into the bearing and then the magnet inside, and experiment with some settings just to dial in your printer, your filament, and how it dimensionally works with physical objects. If you're not sure where to start on that, the Discord server has got people who've done loads with it and tried it with different printers and different filaments. It could give you some settings to start with. Those are probably in the right area uh, if you want to start with those. Infill. This is a big one. You can get away with surprisingly little infill. And I'll show you in a second what difference that makes. That's quite high, actually, 30%. Uh, if you've got a good number of walls and top layers, you can get away with 20. Sometimes I print things with 10%. Let's scroll down here, skip past a few things. I don't tend to do anything with those. Material, that's important. I print as hot as possible to get a strong layer adhesion so that each layer on top of the next layer sort of glues itself together as much as possible. I go for this sort of build plate temperature of 50, so that's how hot the bed gets, and that creates a stickiness to the first layer. Flow I tend to leave alone, although I recently found that one of my filaments just didn't extrude enough. It left some sort of gaps, and I was using 103%. Speed. That is something you want kind of as fast as possible, subject to the quality of your printer. I've Printed a few things slower than that, actually, just to get a good, reliable result. Start with defaults if you're not sure. Travel. Uh, retraction is an important thing. I find this 525 is, is pretty good. That'll, that'll help with stringing. Although there are times when I find stringing problems and it often isn't anything to do with that. It could be old filament that's started to absorb moisture and, and become stringy. I don't think I do anything different with cooling. Support is always none. Support just creates stuff you have to scrape off. And if you're slotting it together with another device, another item, that, that creates a lot of trouble. Bill plate adhesion, nearly always none. Occasionally a brim. And if you are doing a brim, you might as well do a decent brim. That just creates a, a wider brim, really, um, that sticks the object to the bed if it's inclined to tip over. Special modes, nothing experimental. I think there's one experimental that I do. Yes, I switch on small hole max size. That just makes things go slower if it's printing a small feature. And it really just matters on the first layer. If it's printing quickly on the first layer, it just may not stick to the bed. It just may pull away. And there's only one first layer, so kind of take your time over it. That, I think, is everything. I've sometimes worked with coasting. I'm not convinced yet how useful that is. Right, so where are we up to? We can see at the top we're on 30% infill. It shows the main things at the top. So let's go up and um, change that to something a bit quicker. Let's make it 20%. And I'll do a quick slice just to show you what, what we've got at the moment. So it's going to take seven hours like that. Now if I was thinking I could get away with less strength, I might go 10% and make that go quicker. Now, what I like to do a lot is preview at this point. You can only do it once you've sliced. And then if you drag this little blob down, 
you can zoom in, you can have a look at what the fir first layer will look like. And then the second layer. And then as you get to the infill, you can see it's drawing the walls and solid, the internals with this honeycomb. And it gets towards the top and it fills it over and you can see the grooves of those little teeth at the top. Now, I want to do something special with this that I thought you'd appreciate in a video because it's a bit fiddly to do. Although I said that a pretty modest infill of 20% was good for this, because it's a pretty strong object fundamentally, there's one area where it has weakness, and that is these jaws. Because we're going to be clamping those jaws and they're going to be on, under tension with a, with a bolt through them. And I've found if I print on too low an infill, 20% is kind of low here. But let's just drag down. You can see that the internals of that area are now hollow. So I'm finding that with that kind of infill, the, the jaws seem a little too weak. So I'm going to make those jaws, not everything, just the jaws, 100% infill. Make them as strong as possible. So let's go back to prepare. And this is how you do it. So I select the item. I go over to the left and I click that infill blocker. It doesn't tell you what it is, but that little striped pajamas thing. Then I click at a place on this object that I've selected and a cube appears. Now I'm going to deselect everything or what I'm about to do would apply to both blue rimmed objects. Now I'm just going to select this little cube and I'm going to scale it with the second scaling option. I'm going to make it taller. Ah, now what I've got here is I've got uniform scaling set. It's not a problem for now. I'm going to uniformly make it a bit bigger. I'm going to now switch off the uniform. Because I wanted it wider in all dimensions, but I want it taller. Okay, so there it is, quite a bit taller. It's tall enough that can it, it that it can encompass that whole jaw. Now go to the top selector here, the moving selector, and just lower that so that it completely immerses the jaw. And with a little bit of dragging, there you go. Maybe a bit more. Let's just get the 100% area filling more of it. Right. So now everything inside the blue area is going to be affected by what I do next, which is that I need to say what is the meaning of that overlap area, because it can do different things. And this is where I go to this sort of chess pieces thing. I think its primary purpose is about support blocking. And I'm not going to talk about support blocking here, but I'll tell you what the other purpose, which is that you select this modify settings for overlaps. And this is going to say what will happen uniquely to the area that's within the blue box. And at the moment, it says I can change the wall thickness or the wall line count or the top and bottom thickness. What I'm going to do is do select settings. I'm going to search for infill. Infill density. I'm going to do close on it. Now it's saying that the infill density of that overlap is 20% and I want 100%. I'm just going to click in the 4 area just to reassure that it's taken that number. Just click outside the box and we're now done. Now just for kind of reassurance, because I've made mistakes here, you can see that the cube is faded. So it's not a printed item, it's a modifying item. and the Extension arm is solid, so that is a normal printing item. So if I just things just realign things a little bit. And now I hit slice again. Okay, it's going to take a little longer. Seven hours twenty nine. Now, if I preview, and we can already see what's happened. Let me drag to the bottom. That's a complete solid layer as we expect. The first two or three layers are, and then. You can see that the jaws are absolutely solid, even though the rest of the object has got a honeycomb mesh.
So now I could hit save to file, stick that on my SD card, go hit print.